All right, I want to I want to fix a bug in Telescope and in doing so go through the whole process and just talk to you about what it's like. So uh, I have a let me demonstrate this bug again. I've got the server running and what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill this server. And when I do, you can see that I get this type error cannot read property undefined. And you can see that I have a stack trace here and that the 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 top frame in that stack trace is inside of the telescope code. So it's inside backend lib QJS line 77. And so um, the first thing you do with it, something like this is you file an issue. And I filed an issue 18 days ago. So I didn't know what the problem was, but I knew that we shouldn't have this happening. And I was hitting this when I was running the tests, but then other people were also finding it when they were shutting down the server. And so, you know, I record a I record an issue and in doing so, um, I have a number, we have a way to track this. So one of the first things we wanna do is, if you notice something is broken or something's not working properly or the documentation is wrong or, 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 what you need to do is you need to um, file an issue. And the worst that'll happen is we'll close the issue and say, no, this, is, this has been fixed or it's not really a bug or, or, but we might say, this is a problem, we need to fix this. Okay, so I have, a, I have an issue here and you know that the very first thing that I need to do is I need to um, create a new branch. So on my, uh, on my telescope repo, I have an upstream I have a whole bunch of remotes. I have tons of remotes, but one of the upstream, one of the remotes that I have is upstream, and I also have uh, an origin. So I have origin and I have upstream. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my tree is clean, and my tree is clean. I have a few untracked files here that are just scripts that I have in my tree, but they're not something I'm going to put in Git. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say git pull upstream uh, master in order to pull down whatever the master branch has on this. And my master branch is already up to date because I just updated it a few minutes ago. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say git checkout dash B and I'm gonna be fixing issue number 1200. So I'm gonna move over, move over to a topic branch. So now I'm over on my topic branch. And let's um, change my view here and open up my editor. So I have the, I have the, the project here and it's um, when I, let, let's recreate the issue again. So if I start the server and when I kill the server, so here it goes. And I shut down the server and I get this error here. Cannot read property ID and it's inside source backend libq.js uh, line 77. So over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up and I'm gonna say, let's go into libq.js. Here it is, this file right here. Um, this file is where we are using the bulk queue and we are working with all of the different event types. So the way that this um, queue works, the bulk queue, is that we put jobs into the queue and then it automatically processes those jobs. And those jobs get, um, they get stored inside of the Redis server. So they're, they serve, you know, if the node app crashes or something like that, they'll still be there. They'll still be sitting inside of the, of, of the system. Okay, so we have all these different events. So the queue, um, there's an error event, there's a waiting event, there's an active, stalled, there's a progress event, completed, failed, etc. And the one over here, it says that on line 77, we have this problem. So 77 is this line right here. And so it says, cannot read property ID of undefined. And so if we look at this, you can see that I'm trying to get the ID of job, but it's saying job doesn't exist. Now, right away, I'm concerned because if you look at this, you can see that I'm inside the paused event and it says the queue was paused, but then you can see down here, it says resumed. So this looks like really bad copy pasting to me. 
like so. Um, and so it's kind of surprising to me that this has ever worked. So let's take a look at this file. So we go to the code and I wanna look at this code. So I'm gonna um, press T and I'm gonna say libqjs and I'm gonna to go to 77 down here, but I wanna see the blame for this. I wanna see when did we do this? Like how long has this line of code been in here? So here's line 77 right here, written by me. <laughs> Thank you very much. So this is my bug. And so you can see at some point in the past, I was doing this. And I think you can see that I did it 11 months ago in this commit. And you can see that this line right here, I did the same thing. So likely what I've done is I've just copy and pasted the code from both places. So this is an old bug. It's been there for almost a year and nobody's fixed it. Nobody's noticed it. I don't know, whatever, but it, I noticed it 18 days ago. So let's take a look at the documentation for Bull. So the Bull project in their reference, they have um, documentation for all of the different events. And the one that I want is um, paused. So I guess I'll just look for on. Uh, paused, unpause, here it is right here. So you can see that when you resume, there's a job that gets passed to the callback, but when you pause, there's nothing that gets passed to the callback. So this is the bug. This is a pretty simple bug to fix, I think. So what we need to do here is we need to say, we need to get rid of job, and then we need to get rid of job ID. So what happens is the entire queue gets paused and a particular job doesn't, um, isn't affected, but when they resume the queue, then um, that job is started up, or this is the job that's being resumed. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to change this message to, I'm going to say that in this case, uh, the queue was paused. Queue name was paused, and then queue name was resumed, and then this is the ID uh, let's just fix this job.id like that. That looks good. Okay, so let's let's save that. Let's try and recreate the bug. So I'm gonna npm start. Okay, there it goes, and I'm going to control C, and I get no error anymore. Um, the only error I get is the signal that's being sent, which is expected, so that all works, but it's not crashing anymore. The feed queue doesn't crash when it shuts down, so that's excellent. So, so this, is, this is basically, uh, this is fixed. Now, let me talk to you a little bit about the way that we do our coding style and so on. So you may have noticed, like if I do this, if I put a bunch of lines in here and I save this file, do you see how it automatically fixes this for me? If I put a bunch of lines here and I press save, it fixes it. Um, or if I have an extra space here and here and I have no semicolon, and if I, if I save this file, it automatically fixes my code. The reason it does that is because of the way we have the system setup. So in the .vs code folder, we have a list of extensions that should be installed automatically when you're in VS Code. So when you load up this project, if you open up the entire project, like notice how I have the whole folder opened up here. I didn't open up the source folder, I opened up the root folder. And one of the reasons is VS Code will read this .vs code folder so then it's gonna see all of these recommended extensions and it will offer, like when you first run this, you'll get a little pop-up that says, would you like to install recommended extensions? If you already have these extensions installed, then you don't have to do anything, but like ESLint and Prettier, if those things uh, are installed in your environment, then um, the code will use it. So over here you can see in settings, we have a bunch of stuff in here that says, Every time you save, format on save is true, automatically format the code. 
And you can see that it's going to use Prettier to automatically format that code for you. And if I go back to the queue, there are certain things in here that um, are style guide things. Like if I, for example, if I get rid of these, it'll complain. So it'll say you need to you need to put parenthesis around your job. So part of this is ESLint is automatically working with Prettier to enforce the rules that we said we are using. Remember we said um, that we're using the Airbnb style guide. So the Airbnb style guide with ESLint with Prettier, all of those tools are automatically working so that when I save this, it'll reformat, reformat my code. Quite a few students, when they go and set this up, they don't properly install everything. They don't run NPM install. They don't get the extension set up and then they have to fight with the linters. So what I want you to do is I want you to do npm install, get everything installed, set up Visual Studio Code properly so that as you're typing, it'll just do everything for you. You're not gonna have to fight with this code so much. Like it's really, it's, it shouldn't be a hard thing to fix these bugs. Okay, so I've got these two changes right here that I want to, um, I, I wanna basically, I wanna finish my PR. So what have I done? If I do git diff, you can see that I have changed uh, this line here, I got rid of job. This line down here, I changed the, um, I changed the, um, the message that it gives. And this line down here, I just changed the format of it. The only reason that I'm touching this line down here is because the last time I did this, these two lines were touched. And so they're in the history of Git, in the blame history, they're already together. Like you can see over here, um, this line here and this line down here, um, you know, they're both, they're both sort of, um, they're together. So it's okay for me to change them in, in the same thing here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, um, I'm going to write a commit message. So I'm going to say, Git status shows me that I've modified this file here. And if you are if you don't want to type the whole file name, you'll notice that I could just say um, everything in source. If, if I just said git add source, it would do the right thing um, because nothing else in source has changed. So just that one file gets added. And I'm going to say git commit dash m. And now I'm going to write, um, update uh, Q paused event logging to remove job argument. Now when I save this, you're going to notice that some code is going to run. So in Telescope, we use this thing called Husky. Husky will automatically run scripts whenever Git, certain operations happen in Git. So whenever you commit something in Git, what it's gonna do is it's automatically going to run prettier to make sure that your code is properly formatted. So again, the Husky scripts get installed when you um, run npm install. So it's really important that you run npm install before you, you do this or else you're gonna risk not having your code be formatted properly. So we've done a lot to make sure that when people write code, their code is automatically formatted in the editor correctly, it's automatically formatted correctly when it goes into Git, etc. And then when it goes up to the server, we're gonna check it as well to make sure that um, that nobody that you haven't forgot to do formatting, you're not breaking any of the tests, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. All right, so I'm gonna push this up. Git push origin issue 1200. And I'll go back to the telescope and my pull request will pop up here. So I'm gonna go and click on my pull request. I wanna go from my origin into the Seneca and I wanna pull in uh, issue 1200. Now I'm an administrator on this repo. I could just land my code. I don't need to, I don't need to do a pull request, but I'm gonna do the same thing that you're gonna do, that is, I'm gonna put up a pull request and before this pull request can be merged, 
two people on the project have to review it. So you just saw a minute ago, um, I've, I've closed it now, but I am the original author of this bug. So you might say, well, you're the professor, you shouldn't, you don't need review, and that's totally wrong. Everybody needs review because code is impossibly hard. If we put a team of people on it, we're gonna catch more bugs, but even with, even with two people reviewing it, we're gonna miss things. Okay, so now when you come down here, there's a template here that you need to fill out. Lots of projects use this, and they do it so that you don't make mistakes when you're putting this in. So it says, thanks for sending a pull request. If this is your first time, please read this document. So hopefully you've already read that as part of the lab this week. So I'm gonna go down here and it says, uh, what is the issue that this PR addresses? And so it gives me some example here. It says, you know, fixes, number, whatever. So I'm gonna say here, I'm gonna replace this comment with fixes number 1200, like that. Whoops. Fixes 1200. And then it says, what type of a change is this? Bug fix, new feature, documentation, UI. This is a bug fix. So I'll put an X in here. And you'll see that when I click on preview, um, I have to get rid of this space. When I go to preview, you'll see that it's got a check mark in it. So I'm fixing issue number 1200. This is a bug fix. And then we can go down here and go into the description. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and describe some of my research. And I want the person who has to review this to not have to do as much work as I had to do in order to fix it. So I wanna explain it. What a lot of people will do is they'll say, well, I'm fixing this bug, that's it. There's nothing more you need to know. But if you haven't looked at that bug for a while, then you know, you're know you not going to know how to test it. Like how should somebody read my code and understand what I did? Okay, so in order to help myself out, I can go down and look at the code again. And so we can, we can come up here and we can say, um, so first of all, let's look at on paused. So here is the example that I wanna send. So I wanna send a link to this right here. And I'm just gonna copy and paste this uh, over here. So I want to put a little bit of JavaScript in here like so. And I wanna link to the documentation so that my reviewer knows what's going on. So I'm gonna say, um, in the bull doc, uh, reference docs for events, and I'll put a link around this, the um, paused event does not receive a, a job argument while the uh, resumed event does. And then I give an example and I'll say this fix um, removes the job argument from the paused event handler. And I, I'm just gonna say I also fixed the messages for um, paused and resumed to correct some copy paste errors, like so. Okay, so if I look at this now, this is the bug that I'm fixing. It's a bug fix. This is a description of what I've changed and a link to the documentation. So whoever needs to review this, can they can go and look it up. I'm trying to anticipate any problems they might have in order, you know, when they're doing this. And then I guess I need to give them some instructions on how they test this. So the way that this works is our logger is only gonna do this, um, it's a debug message, so it's only, um, it's only if you have debug messages turned on. So if you wanted to test this, let me see if I can do it in mine. So I would have to say log level, let me show you the docs here because this won't make sense. So in the, in the docs, we have a doc on logging. 
and the logging allows you to specify a log level. So let me see, log level is right here. So the log level can be debug info. Actually, this is a bug that somebody could fix. This is not, this, this I know that how the logger works, but if I was reading this, uh, I wouldn't know exactly how it would work. So you can set the logger so that it prints out different kinds of messages, like info messages, error messages, debug messages, and depending on how much spam you want to get back, um, you, can, you can turn it up or turn it down, as it were. So let me see if I can uh, make this happen. So if I say log level equals debug, and then I run npm start, if you're on Windows, this style won't work. You have to do it, you would have to do it through your environment variable. So let's just do that now so that you'll see how it works. If I go to my env, my .env file, and I go to my log level, I'm gonna change this to debug, like so. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna do npm start. Now I should get a lot more messages because it's gonna print out debug messages as it goes. So info message, info message, info message. So now I'm gonna shut this down. Control C, and that's interesting. I'm. I didn't get uh, my log level. I wonder why. Let me try that again. So what if I set log level here? So that's another bug. So you, you're gonna find bugs all the time when you do this. So you can see here it's logging about jobs being completed, job is active. So you can see the queue happening here. If I shut this queue down, if I say control C, you'll see the key, the queue, feed queue was paused. There's the message right there. Okay, so in the, it looks like we, also have uncovered two bugs while we've been doing this, which so we could improve the improve the uh, the log level info in here, and we should also figure out why log level isn't working over here. I'll file these bugs as soon as I get done this video, but for now let's just finish off this. So I'm going to give some information on how to test this. So down here I'm going to say to test this, uh, you can set log level equals debug uh, before running the server. So let's just copy and paste some of this. I, what I really want is a bunch of this like so. And I'm gonna put a line here and I'm just gonna say, so this was log level equals debug npm start. And then there's a bunch of stuff that I'll skip and then it comes down and it does this. So that looks like this. So now someone could see how to, um, they, they would see how to test it. Okay, so then um, we go here and it says, before you submit your PR, make sure you address every one of these. Quality, does the PR build and pass our tests locally? So if I wanted to run the tests locally, what I would do is I would say npm test. And when you run npm test, it's gonna run the linting step, it'll run ESLint, it will run and check if your code is formatted properly, and then it will run all of our unit tests and integration tests that we have um, to make sure that you, know, you haven't broken any pieces of this. Um,
We have a couple of warnings here, which somebody could fix. And then it starts up Jest and it starts running the tests. So we're going to be talking a lot about tests. Probably next week, I'll start having you write tests for your um, project. And you'll have to, a lot of you will have to work on tests for, um, uh, for telescope. I can see lots of warnings, lots of things we should fix in these tests. Okay, so I've passed 165 tests, so I'm good. So all the tests pass. And so I could put a, a, an X in here and say, yes, the tests pass. This PR includes a thorough tests or an explanation of why it does not. So um, I'm gonna put a note in here and just say, I haven't included any tests for this, but I don't think we need them since this is only informational. Logging, so check, I've done that. Screenshot, um, we don't need screenshots in here, so I'm not gonna worry about that. And documentation, do we need to update the documentation? In this case, we don't need to update the documentation. So I have my uh, pull request done. Before, I'm, before I send it off, I'm just gonna go and preview it again. I wanna make sure that I say fixes 1200, the type of change. I've got a big description of what I changed why I changed it, how to test what I did so you can see it. And then information down here, just making sure I went through the checklist. And then when I'm done that, I just go back one more time and read through my changes, make sure that I haven't done anything incorrectly. At which point I can create my pull request. So what's gonna happen when I create this pull request, if I scroll down, is you're gonna see that the automated builders are gonna automatically start working. So I've got three different builders have queued up my changes on Node.js or on GitHub. CircleCI is running my tests. Travis is running my tests. And if you click on any of these, you could see them. Like if I go and look at Travis, for example, you'll see that Travis is running my tests on Linux. Mac and Windows. And you can see here they're all running right now. So like this one is already running. If I click on it, you'll see that the build log will print out here. And if I click on this little circle here, it says follow log, it will scroll down and you can actually watch your build take place. So you can see everything that's happening as it's checking out your code, running the tests, installing everything, making sure that nothing breaks. So every time somebody is giving us code, we're gonna do all these tests. You can do the same thing with CircleCI. So you could see um, CircleCI running your tests. Oh, I'm not, I'm not logged in on this browser, so I can't check those ones out yet. Uh, one second. And I'm in, sorry. Okay, I'm back here. So all of these things are running. As they finish, I'll get green check marks next to them. And so nobody is gonna do, you can see Circle CI is the first one to pass the test. So that's great. So I wanna see all of these go green. Um, you can see that I have a yellow dot beside my commit because some of the checks haven't finished yet. So this will go green it'll be a green check mark or it'll be a red X. If it's a red X, that's a problem. You want it to be green. So now I'm gonna wait for somebody to come along and review this and then and then get that, that uh, merged in. Uh, okay, so I'll pause this there. That was a really small bug, but a lot of fixes don't have to be big. So I have improved the state of this system by not spitting out an error message every time the server shuts down and every time the tests run. And to me, who is you know, really wanting everything to be, to be clean and neat in our code, that's a big fix. So <clears throat> you can get involved in fixing lots of things in Telescope, and I hope you will. You might work on the, re the React front end, you might work on the back end, 
You might work on the tests. You might work on the build system, on Docker. All of these things are, are a possibility, and I hope you'll get involved in doing all of them. I wanted to show you the process for going through and doing a, a PR so that you'd feel comfortable with some of the steps that are involved. And at any point that you're doing this stuff, if you need some help uh, or you want to talk to somebody, make sure you do it on the uh, Telescope channel on Slack. Anyway, I'll pause this for now and I'll see you and your PRs when you get started working on Telescope.